welcome to another edition of the In Search SEO Podcast, where we paint the town red with search marketing insights, super awesome, craft drinking, link profile analyzing guest for you today, Cass Downton is here to get your bad backlink profile expunged. To disavow or not to disavow? Of course we ask that question. At what point does Google say enough is enough when looking at low quality links? And what's the deal with links and authority? How links factor into the EAT equation. But before that, you want to avoid being clobbered by a core update? Well, here are some content creation tips for you. I am your host, Morty Oberstein. I am joined by the aspiring, the ascending, Sapir Carabello. Hello, Morty. Hello, Sapir. Been a while. Yeah. It's been a bit. Yeah. We were away for yeah. a week. Yeah. Feels like forever. <laughs> In between then, I've been halfway around the world and I've had a strep throat, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had a strep last week. No one even knew. I didn't tell anybody here at the office. I wasn't, I, but for the record. I work from home, so I wasn't like okay. I wasn't coming in getting people sick with strep. That's the, I am not that big of a jerk. That's reassuring. Just coronavirus. Oh, okay. All right. No, I was sick with. So if my if I'm like taking sips of of water, actually, I have a bottle of Coke sitting next to me. I don't like Coke. Um, <laughs> that's why it's hard to talk right now. Okay. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh no! <laughs> you can't escape oh, that. Yeah. Do not forget, we put out a new episode of the In Search SEO podcast each and every Tuesday. You can find it on the Rank Ranger blog. You can find it on Stitcher. You can find it on Spotify. You can find it on SoundCloud. And, of course, you may subscribe on iTunes. That was a new record and fast, right? That was fast. I, I don't I don't know. I don't you don't time it? it? No, I thought you, I, I, I expect it, you to so. have a stopwatch out and record that timing every time. <laughs> Next time. Okay. <clears throat> oh, man, I'm really all stuffed up. <laughs> this hurts. Okay. Also, new to Rank Ranger, the TFIDF tool. Survey the top ranking content on the SERP to find content patterns to help you take a hard look at your site. Plus, head over to our blog. That's rankranger.com slash blog. And see, <laughs> what did you think it was? And see how I recommend you use the tool in a real way with no fluff. Because I know some of you SEOs that they're like, TFIDF, and that's exactly what I thought. So there are some real ways you can use this. Check out our blog post on it. I show you some real ways you can use it. So we have a great show for you today. I had a freaking blast with Cass Downton about dealing um, with your bad links. So do not miss that coming at you in a few moments. Uh, So super expert advice about that coming at you. But first, something very, very, very important to know that I must discuss with you. And that's this show's release date, March the 3rd, coincides with the best day of the year. Oh, God. My birthday. I, th- I was wondering when you're going to mention it. And you know what? Listen, listen. Okay, I have a birthday pre- present mm-hmm. for you. What's that? <laughs> I decided that as a birthday present, I'm going to be super nice to you this podcast. That would be a nice change. I'll yeah, take that. That would be really hard for me. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I'm gonna do it. Really? Yeah. You're gonna be nice. Yeah. So I can say like like whatever I want about <laughs> uh, you want. BTS, your favorite no, band. No, 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 no. BTS. Horrible. <laughs> but yeah, you be nice to my birthday. Limit. That's off limit. You have to be nice to me. Okay, I'll try. Okay, I'm gonna have a sip of beer because my throat hurts and it's, <laughs> the coke wasn't working. So let's drink beer. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. <laughs> hey. Ironically, I have a sign, like a poster up in my office yeah. at home that says, like, don't drink in SEO. <laughs> but we're not in my office at home. We're oh. in the Rank Ranger studios. Yeah. Okay, so we had no podcast last week because I was traveling to and fro from SMX West, which was super fun and super awesome. Oh, yeah. How was it? Uh, let them, you know, it's like fun to meet a lot of people yeah. who you know from Twitter and actually meet them in real life and realize, wow, you look nothing like your Twitter picture. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that actually didn't happen. Most people do look like the Twitter pictures. Maybe I don't look like my you Twitter. Don't. I don't. Yeah. No, so it's just definitely. me. Um, you know, it's really nice like to actually meet these people because mm. they are generally speaking, without exception, actually, super nice people who are fun to hang around. That was the best part for me. Oh, that's nice. Yep. That was fun. <laughs> Gotta do it again. Okay. One day. One day. I mean, it means leaving my wife home with four children alone, so it's not easy. But it's fun for you. I'm not going to say that because okay. my wife will find, she will, the one <laughs> podcast bit she will find will be this one. Of course. And then you'll never hear from me again. All right. Okay. So to set, send the police, please. Okay. As my way of saying sorry, we didn't have an episode last week and also as a great way to repurpose some content. Let's not lie. 
I'm going to go into some of like a very small amount of what I spoke about at SMX, um, like particularly the takeaways, um, because hey, um, oh, I, I by the way, I will do. Okay, I I know why like, people love throwing their slides up on SlideShare, and to me, for the most part, that's kind of pointless. At least for the kind of slides that I do, I do very little like written words, the mm -hmm. written content on my slides, mostly right. graphics, images, maybe some data. So you can look at my slides say, on SlideShare. Go ahead, take a look. I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> Because it's like, if you don't hear me explain it, it's like, what is this? Right. So, I mean, there's some cool data, so check it out. But I will do an actual audio recording of the presentation. Oh. Because that's the only way it makes sense. And I get to repurpose the same content again a third time. Oh, lovely. Hey, when you're busy, that's how it goes. <laughs> um, no, but it, 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 there is actual added value. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. Okay, so without further ado, let's take a look at what content creation looks like in the world of the core updates as we are heading back to SEO school. So if you're a regular listener to this podcast, you know that I love talking, even though I have a sore throat right now. Um, and <laughs> you're looking at me like, yep, <laughs> you do love talking. I'm, I'm being nice. This podcast. Oh, that's right. You're being I'm nice. I'm being nice. That's right. That's yeah. You're doing a good job. Yeah, I know. Thank you. I'm keeping silence. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I love talking about, I was going to say, not just love talking. Mm -hmm. I love talking about mm -hmm. um, how Google's looking at sites uh, more holistically profiling sites and what that looks like and looking at things thematically, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't want to get into all of that right now because there's a lot of backdrop for that. And I have written articles about that, so check them out on the Rank Ranger blog. Um, and you can you can look at that. I've talked about it in the podcast numerous times. So I don't want to get into all of the, the backdrop right now because it'll just take too long. And you're like, you're not, you're, I can I'm, see you I'm, holding back your comments. I'm nodding and I'm smiling. I know, I'm, 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 I'm appreciating the gesture of yeah, you not ribbing me. I can I'm, see it's hard for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, okay. Yeah. No, that makes it, I, I appreciate no, it all no, the more. I'm pleased. Let me know when it's your birthday and I won't be an ass to you either. My birthday was last week. You didn't, <gasps> I missed it? You missed it. You know, maybe it was on purpose. The, the week we missed was the week you hit your birthday. <laughs> nah, I would never do that. <laughs> okay. Don't want to nice. get the whole. I'm being nice. Don't want to get into the whole backdrop of Google profiling sites and what that means and what that looks like. Go read the articles or email me or whatever. What I would like to do is get right to the action and talk about how Google's new take is reflected um, by the core updates and what you should do when creating content so that you don't get clobbered by the core updates. And it goes kind of like this. Google's looking at who your site is. Right, what's your site's identity? Um, does it have identity? Like, are you just kind of all over the place? And what the hell is this site talking about in general? Um, because strong identity without any conflicts. What I mean by conflicts, very, very, very quickly, is let's say you're writing. You know what you know what I'm talking about. You go over to an informational site. It's all about informational content, and you feel like they're just kind of peddling their products here, and they're not really writing content for the sake of writing content. That would be a conflict in profile. Are you a commerce site or are you an informational site? Why, if you're informational, why does it kind of feel like you're peddling a product? So that's a conflict in identity. That's a conflict in profile. So without getting too much into that, okay, you have to have authority. Identity and authority are synonymous. Thus the question becomes... Yeah, Morty, please tell us what the question is. Are you trying like, being nice, like sickly nice? Yes, that's the point. Oh, I didn't get that. That's yeah. the point. Oh, you're not being nice. I'm being nice. You're being... I cannot help it when mm. that, you know... That's the <laughs> You're being nice to mess with me. I get it. No. No, no, oh, no, of course not. No. The question becomes yes, What is the question? How do you build strong identity? We're telling you that uh, authority equals identity, and how do you build strong authority? How do you build strong identity? So let's take um what do I have here? Three, three points, four points, three or four points. Oh, that's very it? quickly. Oh yeah. All right, you know I'm gonna <laughs> No, I'm excited to you know, hear it. You can just knock it off and go back to your normal self. No, please. This is, please this is irking continue. me way more. <laughs> this, is, this is you being nice is worse than you being you. What? <laughs> okay. I'm actually offended. This is horrible. Okay, continue. Please stop doing this. Please continue, Morty. <laughs> One, to build a strong identity, you have to, you have, to have strong focus. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, it doesn't mean you have to have like hyper focus. So that wouldn't be a bad idea. 
there could be a broad set of focus, right? If you write about sports, there's a lot of things you can write about that fall under the sports umbrella. Or if you write about SEO, there's a lot of things that fall under SEO. You don't have to write just about technical SEO. That's not what I'm saying. Although having those those really hyper-specific sites, I think might help in certain instances. Um, but whatever it is, just stick to it. Because you can't have identity without focus. That makes no sense. That's like, I'm a doctor, but I also sell shawarmas, <laughs> but I also sell car insurance, but I also play baseball, and but I also sell, um, I don't know, I sell uh, trinkets at the flea market. What kind of doctor is that? Right. Right. Okay, you, identity equals authority. Mm-hmm. Focus equals identity. Mm-hmm. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I think we got it. Okay, I'm just making... Thank you, Morty. You're yeah. so nice. Wow. You're just making sure that we got it. Thank this you. Is, this is, like, creepy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Two. Okay. And this should be an obvious point. If you have to have a focus, and you have to have an identity, and you have to have authority, and all those things are synonymous terms... Don't go after the highest search volume keyword because if your focus is X and you're like, well, I might as well target this really high search volume keyword. I'll bring tons of people to my site. Besides that being a problem from a CRO perspective, because who's actually going to convert if it's not related to what you're doing, it dilutes your authority. And that's not really so novel. What is a bit novel is, you know what I'm talking about when I say this. There are certain keywords or certain topics that kind of fall onto the periphery of what you do or don't do. Like, yeah, it kind of falls under what I do. Yeah, it kind of doesn't really fall under what I do. So I wouldn't go for it in those cases. It's not worth it. Because that, again, if you have a certain core of who you are, who your site is, what your site talks about, and then you're running about something that's a little bit on the periphery, kind of dilutes your identity a bit as well. Mm. Okay? The third thing I will tell you is that write about it from multiple perspectives or multiple angles, or multiple levels. In other words, if you're an authority on something, so you really grab hold, you grab the bull by the the horns, and you really tackle the the topic, right? Right. So grab the bull by the horns. Right. No, you're going to write, if you're an expert on something, you're going to write about it from multiple multiple perspectives, multiple vantage points, um, multiple angles, multiple subtopics, for multiple users at multiple levels. Okay, you really want to comprehensively grab hold of this topic. That creates authority. And lastly, mm-hmm. r- I think we're up to four. Mm-hmm. Having a hard time counting. Write about it often. I, your creepy smile thing you're giving me right now, <laughs> I swear to God, I'm losing I'm my mind here. I'm not doing anything. You're, I wish we had a camera crew for this. <laughs> Continue. Please. Oh, my God. Continue. I can't. This is like the worst birthday gift ever. <laughs> Sorry, I mentioned it's my birthday. I'm so sorry. I'm narcissistic, okay? <laughs> Should have never mentioned it. It's not my birthday. I'm lying. Can we can we can we be back to normal now? Continue, Morty. Why is this? Holy fourth, crap! The fourth, um, the fourth thing I was gonna say yeah. is to write about the topic often. Because if you're not active, if you're not driving the conversation, if you're not a part of how the conversation evolves, then you're not relevant. You're not an authority. Okay, being an authority on something means that you have to be an active participant in the ongoing conversation. However, I don't mean just to write for the sake of writing because I'm telling you who's looking at things qualitatively and just writing for the sake of writing would just be pointless. Sounds good? Sounds brilliant, Morty. Wow. Please feel free to talk more. Oh, thank you so much <laughs> for recognizing my brilliance. Yeah. I will proceed now to talk for another half Please. hour at your insistence. Wow, I'm so excited. Now, if you don't pick up on sarcasm, that you're like, what is going on right now? <laughs> I'm just answering your sarcasm with more sarcasm. This I don't is, know what you're talking about. I think I'm you're freaking the audience sure. out at this point. <laughs> <laughs> just no, Just stop. It's creepy. Okay, there's... Please. I'm not doing Please, anything. no, God. I'm not talking I'm, to you. I'm talking to God. Please, God. <laughs> Please like, make her stop. Thank you, God. There's a lot more I could talk to you about creating content in line with what's going on with the core updates. But I won't ramble. No, Aww. no, no, no. Please okay. don't. Don't. Okay. I'm, you're, okay. you're killing my mojo. Okay. Please. No, yeah. for real. I mean it. Okay. Yes? Yeah. You're not taking me seriously. Okay. Some There's a lot of nuance in what I just said that I don't have time to get into right now. Uh, maybe a... Po- a post forthcoming we'll see um so at some point again i'll release the larger video on my slides on the up on SlideShare, but without any audio and it's pretty hard to get what i'm going after 
So there's that. Fine. Now that they killed my mojo totally. Okay, so um, well, here's my pivot then. Okay. Okay. From not being bad at content creation vis-a-vis -vis the core updates to dealing with those bad links that can ruin your site's backlink profile, strap in because here's my interview with Cass Downton. Cut one. Welcome to another In Search SEO podcast interview session. Today we have a trust and authority expert, an industry speaker, an unequivocal dog lover, which in my book makes all the more better. Um, she is a senior SEO analyst at the famed Marie Haynes Consulting Agency. She is Cass Downton. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Sure, my pleasure. So I have to ask you, you started off with a, a microbiology degree and you ended up in SEO and that's the second most interesting thing I could think of about you. <laughs> um, what I really <laughs> what I really want to talk to you about is you are a self-described beer snob. So I guess that, oh, that means you don't yeah. like Labatt? I mean, there is something to be said about producing a beer on that scale at that consistent flavor profile. Using rice, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, just bad. It's not good. But they do it the same every time. <laughs> it's right. So, when, so I, I'm in Israel and someone recently told me, oh, they started importing Budweiser and they're so excited about this. I'm like, yay, that's amazing. <laughs> Give all the beers you can yeah. possibly import from the US, you imported Budweiser. Kings Cheers of piss bud. water. That's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm with you on this. I'm a beer snob, sort of. Not probably not as bad as you are, but I feel you on this. Oh, and but the microbiology thing. How the heck did that happen? So um, I actually started out. Uh, so I went to university and I started in pre med. I wanted to be a doctor. Hmm. Um, I was that kid in school who was like that overachiever, brown noser, kind of keener <laughs> girl that everyone really kind of hated. Low key, just right? Because right. I was, yeah. I feel um, like. So I was like, oh, I'm going to be a doctor and, you know, this is my life plan. It's going to go great. Go to university, uh, basically get slapped in the face with reality. <laughs> <laughs> Life's a bit harder. Um, turns out I was actually a lot more interested in the reason why that people got sick instead of, you know, trying to help them get better. Right. So I made kind of a switch into um, microbiology just because that is the ultimate why, like, Everything in the world is connected to the bacteria that is <laughs> in the air, in our bodies, in our water. You know, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for bacteria. You know, it's the reason why for everything. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and then afterwards, I was like, okay, so I'm going to go work in a lab. I'm going to save the world, do all these great things. Um, and then I graduated in 2012, which was... Uh, close enough to the recession that there were no jobs. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Turns out a lot of the world thought that, um, you know, science research wasn't that important. <laughs> Clear, clearly, so, clearly it isn't, obviously. Yeah. Right. So everyone's funding got cut. There were no jobs. I ended up working um, in a pharmaceutical distribution center, and I was in charge of their uh, regulatory uh, affairs and I did that like sounds QC. that can sound very shady by the way the way you describe oh, that I, I, so pharmaceuticals myself. checking on the regulation the main office was on a street corner next to a bodega oh I introduced myself when I met new people I was like hi I'm Cassie I'm a drug dealer <laughs> <laughs> so I did that for several years and you get to know the detail like it's a government job essentially but without all the perks and benefit of a government job <laughs> even better all the boring and hard work that comes <laughs> with it. Without the benefits and the vacation yeah. time. And so I knew Marie um, through a mutual friend. And they were like, okay, so Marie's been doing this as a startup just by herself, solo consultant, and wants to start an agency. And I was like, well, that sounds interesting. <laughs> so I met Marie. I threw my name in the mix. And one thing led to another. And now I review a lot of those, you know, pharmaceutical websites that have, <laughs> it, uh, those core updates <laughs> it's a circle of life right there i know wow yeah so from wannabe doctor to ripping apart those uh supplement websites and that's life yeah circle that's of life like you said pretty much it did you get a refund on your degree though can you do that 
I wish. Right. And so I you're wish. paying off the student loans as you work in SEO. No, it's still going. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So from how to deal with life to how to deal with your poor backlink profile. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So first question is always make sure we're on the same page. When we talk about a poor or bad or horrible, horrific backlink profile, what in the world is that? Okay. So if you created links to your website, and the purpose of that link was to try and increase your site ranking in Google. That's an unnatural link. And if you have enough of those unnatural links uh, that it's you know, a majority or at least a significant portion of your total backlink profile, then that's an indication that you probably have like a poor or bad backlink profile. Okay. Now, the second foundational question I have to ask is, <laughs> do you have to do anything about that? Because Google keeps saying, well... We're pretty good at understanding when that's happening. And now Penguin yeah. 4.0 is here and it's live and it's part of the core algorithm. Everything is working itself out automatically, right or not right? This is <laughs> where I'm going to throw in the SEO's favorite answer. Ooh, ooh, and it, say depends. it depends. It depends. Well, that was, that was record time. We've only been in the yeah. interview for, yeah, good. Hey. Question two, it depends. Question two, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> so those spammy links probably are going to get picked up by Penguin and you're probably going to be okay with them. So if you've got um, a bunch of comment spam and they're keyword anchored, you know, that's something that's very obviously spam. Google generally deals with it well. You know, you've got low quality directory links, um, you know, uh, image directories that just scrape content from everywhere. Those kinds of things, you got a bunch of links like that. They're probably not going to be hurting you because that's the kind of link that Google uh, can ignore with Penguin. But then when you get into the stuff like, um, you know, a link exchange or paying for links or, you know, widespread, even widespread uh, guest posting can be the kind of thing that gets you into trouble if you start doing it all the time in an unnatural way that, you know, it starts to go from, it looks like you've done a natural link, you've written an article that maybe another website's um, viewership or readership would be interested in reading, but all of a sudden you've done this 500 times. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> you know, do you think 500 <laughs> websites, you know, they're also interested in your content or are you just trying to get 500 links? So those kinds of things are when you can start to get in trouble because that's what an algorithm is going to start to have trouble picking up and start to penalize your site for if it's, you know, maybe you get a manual action for that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. that pattern of link building is apparent. How good is Google at understanding that or seeing that? You know, if I, if I want one, you know, I, I write a blog for you, you write a blog for me, we give each other links. One time. I'm assuming Google won't know. One time, I don't think it really matters. Two times. So I think, yeah. Okay. Two, nah, no? Probably. Okay. I can keep going. The thing is, yeah, we'll count all the way to <laughs> we'll all the All the way to the point where you say it's a problem. Yeah. So it's when it's a pattern that's apparent. So if if I'm doing a site audit and I look at your backlink profile, and I spend, you know, 20 minutes just looking through a bunch of the sites that are linking to you, what their keyword anchors are, the kind of um, content that the link is within, and I can pick out a pattern. That's probably an indication <laughs> that Google's algorithms can too. Okay, that's a, that's a good and answer. If, yeah, if I can do it, Google can. I would think it's I the think reverse, I'm, but okay. I think I'm pretty good, but like I'm no match for an algorithm. Right. But if I'm seeing a problem, then you know. So how often, what, okay, how do you go from, here's a website, it's time to audit its links or its backlink profile. How does that come about? Is it just, you know, every month we do it or there's certain signals that we look for in order to start it or both? So that's a good question. Um, again, this is kind of a cop-out answer for me because we, we do a lot of um, large-scale site reviews. And one of the things within that site review is we just kind of do a link overview. So any site that comes to us that we do this review for, we're going to be looking at their back, backlinks. Um, so when we're looking through it, we're looking for things like, you know, is it keyword anchored? Is this, you know, a low quality site? Do they have, you know, maybe an infographic they've made? And all I of a sudden those. I see, they're great. <laughs> Please <laughs> but post I, my infographic. If, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm seeing that they have, you know, um, say they have 100 links pointing to their website and 65 of those links are all to the same page with that infographic, you know, that's going to be something that indicates, okay, they use that infographic as a link building tactic. So when I'm doing that overview, I'm looking for an indication of a problem. 
And if we see a problem by going through those links, um, then that's something that we're going to say, okay, this site, you might benefit from doing like a link by link full audit. Um, and we're going to see, is this something that you are actually, you know, getting close to being penalized for? Like, so just because you have bad links doesn't mean you're going to get a penalty. It doesn't mean your site's being hurt algorithmically. But if we're noticing a pattern, we're going to say, look deeper into it. And maybe this is something you can address. So how do you know, though? Okay, let's say the infographic case is a great one. Because it could be, I made a really awesome infographic. It's the only good thing I've ever done in my entire life. And I have an awesome email list and I emailed to everybody and everybody loved it. And everybody started linking to it. And that's the only reason why it's happening. I didn't do anything wrong. It's possible. Realistically, <laughs> that should be what every link is, is stuff like that. But... The problem is you're still dealing with an algorithm. Right. So as smart as an algorithm is, if the data that is getting fed into it from your site and from the links that are pointing at your site are something that more often than not tends to be an indication of a site that's doing something in an unnatural way, you might get slapped with, you know, I don't want to jump straight to saying that your site's going to get a penalty if you do right. stuff like this. But, you know, you could be hit algorithmically. You know, it could be partially a reason for your traffic dropping is because maybe Google doesn't want to trust your link profile as much. And when that happens, that really sucks. Yeah. If you know that those are good links. Right, that really does suck. Tough. But if you have a ton of good links and they're all from that infographic, and then the rest of your links that you have that are also good links are stuff that haven't been paid or something that you would have been doing in a way to kind of unnaturally earn that link, then there's not really a reason to distrust your link profile. So yeah, that one piece is maybe questionable, mm -hmm. but if your overall link profile has no reason to raise suspicion, then you're probably going to be fine. Right. I mean, it, it, it is an interesting point. Like you could construct it in such a way where you're doing everything fine, but the way you're perceived by Google is a little bit off. Which right. is interesting, which I don't think people talk to you know talk about it. I'll get it out right. It's not a thing people talk about enough. I don't know why that was so hard to get out. <laughs> well, we see uh, we see sometimes like with manual actions. Um, so this is when you want to be really aggressive and disavowing links um, that are unnatural or that Google perceives to be unnatural. And we'll have clients say to us like, "Those are natural links. Like we did no link building for that specific thing." And I mean, at that point, you just got to, you know, but the bullet sucks. you did some link building. Sometimes life's unfair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that should be, why did this happen? Email back to client. Life is unfair. Life is tough. Right. It's tough. <laughs> um, by the way, I'm glad you mentioned disavow because now I get to ask that question. Should you disavow your links? Should you not disavow your links? When should you? When shouldn't you? What's the whole, why is everybody always debating this issue? What's the truth? See, this is a tough one. Depends. So it depends. It depends. So it kind of depends if you have a lot of like spammy links to your website. So if you have those like scraped content that's linking to you or, you know, say you threw your website up on like a legitimate directory. Some website came along, scraped that, and all of a sudden you've got 3,000 links pointing at your <laughs> site and they're all spammy links. You know, like so, that. Ha that's just a natural part of the web. That's the kind of stuff that, Google's algorithms are supposed to be able to ignore. So if you have a bunch of links like that, yeah, they're bad links. You probably don't have to worry about them because they're probably not going to be helping or hurting your mm -hmm. site. Um, if you have a bunch of these self-made links, that's when you want to start to say, okay, is the majority of my link profile natural or unnatural? And if it's unnatural, you know, is this something that I think is going to hurt me? Have I done it on a scale enough that is putting me in danger of getting hit with manual action? Do I think that my site has been impacted, the traffic, because you know maybe Google's algorithms are saying, yeah, all these links are untrustworthy links, so we're just gonna say that they shouldn't rank well. Okay, so now the, the next question is, so you, do, you disavow these links, and tomorrow I see it increase? In a month from now? Probably in not. A year from now? Never? Generally, you're going to see it in a couple weeks to a couple months, maybe. You might see it earlier. Um, so 
when you submit your disavow file, Google has all of that. They're going to recrawl your website, but it takes them a while to hit all of those links. So if you have like a large website or maybe a low quality website that Google has learned that, you know, your site doesn't update very often, so it doesn't crawl your site very often. If your site doesn't get crawled a lot, or if it's big enough that it takes a while to crawl it, Google's not going to encounter that link again to know that it needs to be ignored. So it takes a while to kind of reprocess all of those links to learn which ones to not count to reevaluate your site. Is there anything you can do to speed up that process or you're just, just it is what it is? I mean, it kind of is what it is. You can try, you know, fiddling around with uploading a sitemap right, that has, right. you know, but generally it's time. Oh, well. And realistically, um, you know, if you have a site that has a bad link profile, there's probably other things that need to be fixed <laughs> on your site as well anyway. So take the time and kind of just fiddle around with it. Right. Okay, so I have to ask you this question because I see this everywhere, and I, I am not a link building expert. In fact, I actually hate link. I'm Google's prototype. I feel like a total <laughs> scuzz bucket when I ask, "Hey, do me a favor. Could you link to this?" I'm like, you like it? Link to it. You don't like it? Don't yeah. link to it. I and I'm, I'm a terrible marketer, I guess, which is fine, whatever. But I'm not a scuzz bucket. Um, it's <laughs> more important than anything. That's the kind of thing that keeps you warm at night. Right, right. <laughs> Jobless, but warm yeah, at jobless, night. Jobless, but warm. Right. You know, Self righteous. So yes. <laughs> um, I don't have heat now, but it's okay. I'm still warm inside. <laughs> well, this is why you're in the desert. Right. right so I'm in the desert because I don't need heat. Um. So one of the cliches I always hear is you have someone links to your to your site and I don't know there's some online gambling whatever whatever from some third world country you don't want that link you should email them um, and ask them please don't link to my site what are the chances that, that actually ever happens They're like oh yes we're so sorry we'll we'll not link to your site anymore because I'm a cynic and I don't see that ever happening yeah I mean it's a if somebody came nice. yeah, yeah, if somebody came to you and was like, Hey, you linked to my content, um, but actually do you mind like no following that link or yeah, removing okay. that link? Sure, no problem. You know, would you do it? No yes. problem. Um, because I don't have a black hat site. I, I'm a normal the thing individual. Is, though, you're you're paying attention to your website. Some of these black hat sites that are linking out you know, maybe they're doing it automatically. So maybe it's auto-generated stuff that's linking to you. So you're trying to get a hold of somebody who's not listening. Right. So if that's the case, you're never going to get a response. And, you know, sometimes people run, you know, it's like if you get somebody that's running an affiliate site, they might be running, you know, hundreds of sites at once. So they're not going to be noticing, you know, some guy emailing one of their sites saying, hey, remove that, remove that link, please. So when you get a manual action sometimes that that's something that google wants to see you've made the effort to do um if you're not getting a response there's not much you can do about that right but at least you can show that you made the effort to do it so why don't people say that when they write these articles like no, they're not going to reply back to you they're obviously scammers that's why you that's why you don't want their link to begin with but it's good to show google when you get the manual action that hey look i tried how come we don't write that well, I mean, you should not write everybody. That. I should write. You this. should write. This that. is my next. This That's is my your next, next article. article. There Thank you go. You for that. Absolutely. <laughs> Do me a favor. Throw me a oh. link to like my Twitter there profile. The I'll app. link to yes, you. Thank Just you, tell please. me what keyword you want the anchor text to be. Mm -hmm, and no problem. I'll get you okay. That. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so with that kind of stuff, like if you don't have a manual action, is there a benefit to doing this and taking the time to do it? It, de it, I don't, it depends on how much time you have. Like, do you want to take the time? It depends on how much and, time you have. I'm sorry. Well, like, if, you've got, if, you've, <laughs> if you have a bunch of clients, you know the site isn't going to be worthwhile linking to you or getting a link from. Why are, you, why are you trying to email them and say remove the link? Why not just throw it in your disavow file? Because you have no life. If it's a Clearly. spammy link, if it's a spammy link, it's probably not counting for anything because Google's probably ignoring it. If you have a manual action, you're going to want to try and get rid of them as much as possible and show it. But if you're just emailing them because you want that one link removed, because maybe you're hoping in the future that that site will link to you in a natural way, so you don't want to burn it by throwing it in your disavow file, is it really, is that worth it? Is, it, is that website 
going to be linking to you naturally if they've already linked to you in the past unnaturally. <laughs> this is a point where you're like, I'm thinking way too into this process here. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have clearly a very abstract mind with way too much time in my hands if I'm thinking about well, this. okay. You know, when you have a website, a lot of people, you know, their website is their whole business. It's their baby, you know, and they see that this is an unnatural link and it, it's hurting their baby. <laughs> so they want to try and protect it. So they'll email that. Per and that is a legitimate okay. thing. You know, okay. you might you might get a response. Your response rate will probably be low. But Low, lower than you... your CTR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But like if you have the time and you think that that website is worth maybe trying to get a link or maybe, okay, if you think that you have the time to spend on this, and if you think that that website maybe in the future will link to you with a natural link, then it might be worth it. So you basically have done an amazing job saving this horrible SEO cliche. Kudos. That Thank that you. was that was an amazing <laughs> performance. It took me a while took, to yeah, get to the end, a, but I got there. It's like a, it's like a good Oscar-worthy movie. It takes a long time to get to where you really want to go, and the end, you're like, you know what? That really was an Oscar-worthy movie in the end. But okay, right? I'm yes. I'm like the latest Tarantino movie, like a whole you're like bunch all of talking. Tarantino movies, in my opinion. We're not sure where it's going, and then at the end, it all wraps up nice and tidy. Right. So I'm I'm glad there's somebody else out there who has the same opinion about Quentin Tarantino than I do. <laughs> Everyone who likes him is now, oh, you guys are horrible people. But oh. yeah. Anyway, um, what I want to ask you, I had another, oh, oh, because we're talking about Black Hat SEO. One of the things you always hear about Black Hat SEO, I hear it all the time, is that, oh, no, no, it, 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 I have all these great PBNs, and everything is great, they'll give me a big boost, okay, it might not last forever, but it's really great, and it's really worth it. Because you're so into the, the link building side of SEO, I'm wondering if you could add your thoughts or put your thumb on the scale for that. No, 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 PBNs are fine, all these things are fine, all these link schemes are fine, no one's going to find out, no one's going to notice, um, it'll, yeah, okay, it might not last forever, but it's good anyway for a short period of time. So... Is this a site that you're intending to only run for a short period of time? <laughs> no, of course not. Because if you're running an affiliate site and the purpose is just to get as much money as possible in a short period of time, then, you know, maybe this is, maybe you want to dabble in the black arts. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't recommend it, but, you know, who am I to say what you want to waste your money on? Um, if this is like a site that is, you know, this is your business, this is your career, this is something that you want to run for, you know, multiple years. Um, do you really want to risk um, hurting your link profile by doing a whole bunch of PBNs? No. So this is the kind of thing that can get you a manual action. And it's easy to say, oh, it's a great, like, nobody's going to know, you know, we are very good about, you know, this is a massive right, network, right. so, like, it's going to be hard to see the sites and the patterns and stuff like that. But like, You and every other Blackhead SEO are saying that. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, the thing is, it's, it's such a cliche to say, but Google is crawling everything that's in their index. They can see what sites are linking to which and the percentage and they can see the connections that, you know, maybe a person's not going to be able to see as well because they're only looking at, you know, a couple thousand or like a few tens of thousands of websites, but there are trillions of websites out there. So if Google is able to crawl that and rank that and sort and see how content and pages and niches kind of relate to each other, then it's probably not going to take Google very long, relatively, to figure out, okay, this site tends to link to sites within this network. These are all connected and they're cross-linking to each other. This is an attempt to manipulate page rank. We're going to slap a manual action on this because our algorithms can't quite do this. So one interesting thing on this, I was talking to Eli Schwartz about this. He used to be the um, head SEO, head of SEO, head of growth, whatever, at, at um, SurveyMonkey um, until he recently went on his own. So plug for him. And one of the things he said was that Google knows exactly what's happening, just like you said with all the links. But at times, they're letting it go on purpose. But they know it's there. There's not, Maybe there's nothing better to show up. Maybe this isn't, you know, besides the fact that it has this problem with the links, it is better than other results for whatever reason, and Google's letting it happen. That's why you see sometimes Black Hat SEO works. Thoughts? I mean, I'm not going to argue that sometimes Black Hat stuff can work. Do I think that it's a long-term strategy? No, definitely not. So don't do it. 
Yeah. I would, I mean, I don't do it. I'm very much, I'm very much a purist. Like, I mean, Marie Haynes trained me with links. If you have tried in an unnatural way to get a link, then you're probably messing around with Google and you're going to get in trouble. Like I'm very much a link purist, similar to you. You know, it just feels a little bit better, you know? Yeah. My self-righteousness about right. this keeps me warm at night, it's, <laughs> you know, and I need it being in Ottawa with it so cold lately, but it's hard to say, like, it's, it's, there's so many the, ins and outs, a lot of, you know, to quote the big Lebowski yeah. ins and outs, what have you, it's a lot of different people involved, that sort of thing. For sure. Right. And like, you can see if it's something that's working and, you know, do I think it's a short-term solution? Maybe. Do I think it's a long-term? No, no definitely no. not. Definitely not. At some point, Google's going to say, okay, we're shutting this down. This is the end of this. So, you know, is there a reason that they're letting it go on? If they know about it and they're letting it go on, are they just waiting for the network to build? Are it's they like waiting for more people to get into baiting it? Baiting you. They're are baiting they, you. Yeah. You know, is this a honeypot or something? Right, like, right. I'm not, you know, <laughs> who knows what's going on in the background? Do you want to get involved in that? Probably not. Probably not. Oh, so now well, the last thing I have to ask you, besides for a little fun question we're going to do in a minute, is so I am also a very, um, besides being a link purist, I'm very much into authority and trustworthiness and the quality reader guidelines and the core updates and their relationship to authority and all that sort of thing. So I have to ask, I was recently getting into a discussion on Twitter. It wasn't really called a discussion because you don't discuss things on Twitter. You just sort of yell back and forth. Um, <laughs> And 280 characters, which is wonderful communication. Anyway, that the relationship between links and authority. What is the relationship? Because you have things like, um, oh, Google says all sorts of things. Gary says yes. When we talk about authority on the algorithmic level, we mean links. Then you have Denny Sullivan saying at one point, well, we don't have an EAT score, but we have things, we have signals that serve as proxy to determine authority, which sounds very much different than just links. So is it links? Is it more than links? What's going on algorithmically with authority in terms of links? It's tough to say, really, just because, like you said, Google has been very kind of, I don't want to say secretive, but they haven't been very forthcoming with this information. Very vague. That's right. That's a good word for it. But, you know, if you ask anybody, say you are writing about, um, you know, the benefits of a certain type of vitamin. Would you prefer to get a link from Healthline or the Mayo Clinic or, you know, health.harvard.edu or someplace like that? Or would you like it from, you know, mommyketobloggerdaily.com? That one. I want that one. Ooh, that one. I want that one. That one sounds really good. I I bet you when I go to that website, there's going to be no ads or anything there. Nothing sketchy. Not one. Nope. No. Um, Just really solid information. Straight. Straight up. Very legit website. Mm -hmm. Don't, no advice. no credit card necessary. <laughs> right. But so is authority you, beyond that? Does authority exist beyond just the, the nature of the link? I mean, a lot of stuff kind of tie into authority. If you ask, you know, if you took 10 people and asked them, you know, name one thing that could indicate authority, you're probably going to get 10 different answers. Yeah, I, I agree. They're all right, realistically. So there's no reason that multiple things can't go into this and oh, say, okay. Preaching to the choir, but. Yeah. So if you, you know, you're a web, you know, say you have a piece of content and you're writing about like a YMYL topic, it's written by somebody who, you know, goes on CNN, you know, every other week and is, uh, you know, their expert panelist on their new shows. And they've written a book that sells, you know, on Amazon and, um, Dr. You know, Phil. Like they have all of, you know, they have like their degrees and certifications just go on for an entire page. This is somebody who knows what they're talking about. And if they're choosing to link to your content, that's an authority who's endorsing your content as being really, really good, essentially. So you want link. Dr. Phil so, linking to you? I don't know about Dr. He's Phil. He's on TV, but... <laughs> he has degrees. He's clearly an expert. He can solve he can solve people's problems, like deep problems, in thirty minutes. I mean, realistically, so is that you know the Long Island medium lady. <laughs> like, there's lots of people that go on TV. There's varying degrees of okay. authority, you know. Right, but so ba- back to the this, real point. Is it just the link that indicates the authority? No, it's probably all of those other yeah. signals that contribute to, to it. You know, a link is 
one thing and then you have several other things that are also kind of passing authority along or indicating authority and it strengthens that connection. I, I very much agree. I think it's I think it's almost funny where we say, oh, it's just links. Links are the only thing <laughs> that give authority. There's nothing else Google can do algorithmically other than index every piece of content in the freaking world and then say, you know what, we know, let's take health. We know that WebMD is really authoritative. We know that the Mayo Clinic is really authoritative. I think Cleveland Clinic and whatever clinic from whatever state. And let's see how they deal with content, what terminology they use, how they write their content, how they write their header, whatever it is. And then let's compare it to somebody else, like your keto diet, whatever, and see. let's see how they approach the same topic. No, no, Google's exactly. not doing that. That's not going to happen. I was like, no, why would Google do that? It's pretty much how all the machine learning works as it is. There's no reason to do that. Just look, just look at links. To me, that sounds yeah, like insane. Just links. Just links. Just links. Okay. Just the one thing that's been spammed since day one of the internet. Right. That's not a direct signal of anything. It's an indirect signal of everything. We should not actually look at content directly. Just links. Because Gary said so. Yeah. Gary said so. Only links. Yeah. Gary would never lie to us. No. And whatever PubCon it was, I'm sure it was true. (laughs) For sure. Right. (laughs) Whether it be PubCon 2019 or PubCon 2009. Same thing, same story. Nothing same has advanced thing. in 10 years. Uh-uh. Not a, not, single, not a single thing. thing. Well, I'm glad we can agree with that. <laughs> um, with that, I have a, a fun little bit that I like to call optimize it or disavow it. Uh, if you listen to this show, you know that it, it's either two options, it's zero sum, two good options, and you're stuck choosing one good option over another good option. Or I'll give you two crappy options, and you're stuck choosing crap over crap, which is crappy. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the Cass Downton version of Optimize It or Disavow It. So it's zero sum. You can say it depends, but it's really a cop out. But it's I'm okay. I'm not to say okay. it depends. I, appre- I, I appreciate depends, that as a host. Shut this down. I will say that it's not a nursing home and there are no depends here. That's my line. All right. Okay. Um, which my wife hates because she's a nurse at a nursing home. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> if 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 you had two links that you had to deal with, there's you have no choice. You have to deal with these two links. One is from an online gambling company that's completely, you know, third world, whatever crazy things that they're doing with their website, spammy, spammy, spam, or you have a link you have a deal with that came from a site that was just hit by a core update, a health site. It comes from a health site just hit by a core update. Which link do you focus on? Hmm. So it I depends. have to disavow one of these links? You have to, so right. You buying, have, I don't mean just mean you have to like, so I can think. You have to think, I, I mean by disavow, that's why, it's perfect. This the perfect name for this segment. Finally, we talk about links in this segment. <laughs> you have to choose how you allocate your time. You only have time for one and then the world ends. Like there's no more time afterwards. All right, all right, all right. All right. So which link? So I'm going to go with probably the site that got hit by the core update. Because a good link is a good link. And just because the site gets hit by a core update doesn't mean it was necessarily doing something bad. Mm-hmm. A lot of core updates, Google has said that, you know, sometimes it's just a site that you were maybe competing with that was previously um, unrewarded is now being rewarded. And <laughs> I you're love that. losing out in comparison. <laughs> Again, another Google non answer. <laughs> right. like, I love that. I love that answer. I love that answer. <laughs> but, so, like, the site might not have been doing something wrong. It just, <laughs> just got hit. Just got so I'm hit. Gonna, I'm going to take my chances with the health site okay. over the shady gambling site. And that's not because the gambling site could be a bad link, necessarily. I mean, it probably is. It probably is. Come on. Two. Just, you know, history kind of dictates it's that. It's gambling. But it's gambling, you know? It's... Which is nothing wrong with gambling, if you like gambling. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with There's gambling. Nothing. I love... I'm oh, you're from I'm Canada. Big, Gamble all Canada. we want. Right. Gambling. We gamble on everything. You know, I'm a big sports person. I gamble on sports. Oh, you're a big sports Nice. Me too. Yeah. Toronto Ra- <laughs> Raptors fan? Raptors fan. Maple Leafs fan? Yes. Ha- that hurts a little bit because, you know, it's, it's, been, it's a been a long time. I know how, I'm a Rangers yeah. fan, so I know how you feel until 1994. Oh, okay, it was okay. a long time. Yeah. yeah. We sucked ever when since then, get, also. Yeah. You get yeah. almost that glory and then, yeah. and then it's gone. Yeah, it's hard. It's kind of fade. Long, slow fade down. Blue Jays fan? Yes. Oh, so I you, mean, okay. Canada only. Canada has one baseball team. So right. You know. Well, 
Right, oh, right, right. You only have one base, but I, I don't know why yeah, I thought you were. There was talk that yeah. Tampa Bay might switch to being half in Mar- uh, Montreal and half in Tampa Bay. Well, that sounds I like that. It sounds yeah. kind of weird. Bring but... the Expos back. I'd be into that. Yeah, that's, I'd be, be I like that. I like that idea. Yeah. Um, but the Astros, by the way, said they'll supply metal garbage cans for all the cheating you want if they do that. <laughs> that, I don't think, will do it. I don't think there's anything to add about – you have anything to add about the links or – no? I don't okay. think so. Okay, I then we're good. got it all. Yeah. Cass, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This was so much fun. And we should do this again. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. And we are back to your regularly scheduled In Search SEO podcast. Really interesting to hear our take on um, on when to disavow and not to disavow. I love asking those sort of questions, by the way, because it's so fun to hear. There's always like so much conflict and so much drama about these questions. No, we disavow. No, don't disavow. When did you disavow? It's overrated. Blah, blah, blah. Duh. But it's... (laughs) It's just, it's just like fun. Like everyone's like screaming to like hear like a real answer. So mm-hmm. that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. It's and, nice. And, and, and miss your sickly sweet. I'm always sarcasm. Sweet. Just not sickly sweet. sweet sarcasm. Are you still doing the news? Yeah, let's do the news. Can I have a birthday like, request then? Because <laughs> no. you just do it normal. <laughs> I'm gonna do it normal. Yeah. Don't okay, worry. so here's up here hitting with the news. Normal style. Okay, dimension labels within image search are no more. Instead of indicating the image size on each image, Google is labeling images by the content they reflect, such, such as recipe, product, video, and more. So this is interesting because it, it, I'm a person who goes to image search basically to steal images. I know it's like a horrible <laughs> thing. No, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, go it, to, yeah. I go to take memes and you know, spread right. them around the office, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I care about one thing, level of funniness. And the size. I don't want a really small image. Right, so right. I like the fact that the label's there. Now, Google's saying, when they're saying when they're making this update, that I am not the profile or typical um, image search user. I guess I'm atypical across the board now. The average user is looking at the image as a segue to more content. So they want to know if this image reflects a recipe, a product. So that when I click on it and need to go to the page, I know what I'm you know, sort of in store for. So that's mm-hmm. an interesting statement of how Google sees users uh, vis-a-vis image search. Right. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Explore panels, also known as right-side featured snippets, have vanished. Well, not all of them, just 60% of them. Hmm, I wonder who broke this news. Um, it happens to be his ah, birthday today. Yeah. Yep, it happens to be that you're giving him a very <laughs> difficult time on his birthday. I wouldn't Well, we're recording a, a few days before my birthday, but you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Yeah. It was me. Yeah. Great. We all, yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you trying to like, I don't know, I don't know what you're trying to get at here. <laughs> I, are you trying anything. to say like, give me credit for this, like in a good way? Like, oh, wow, Morty, <laughs> you caught that. Or are you like trying to mock me? Just the good way, Morty. Yeah, I think you're mocking. <laughs> That's so fine. Oh, uh, on that. Um, yeah. There's speculation this could be a precursor to Google removing the, the original idea was to take these explore panels or right side feeder snippets, move them to the main column, and de- deduplicate the feature snippet or the um, sorry the the URL used within the snippet or the explore panel, whatever you want to call it. Um, so could be this is a precursor to doing that. Kind of makes sense if you're going to move them over, maybe get rid of the excess fluff, like sixty percent of it, um, before you make the move over. So it could be that's coming. Mm-hmm. Speculation. Speculation. Okay, Google's AR SERP feature has hit products. The 3D image announced at I.O. 2019 has now been spotted for commerce queries. Right, so basically the the example that I think Glenn Gabe found this was um, some query related to a a handbag, a purse. So you you can pull out the... If you can see a 3D image of the of the handbag and then place it within your own environment. So if you want to see, like, hey, how does it look with this um, shirt or whatever, then you can actually like see how it matched together. That's pretty cool. It is. Yeah, it's a nice extension for how to use this. It makes a lot of sense products. Right. Mm-hmm. Google says that all sites will be switched to the mobile-first index within next year. Right, so you have basically 12 months if your site's not ready yet, which it should be. Come on already. <laughs> Let's be real. Your news is coming. Like, come on. <laughs> Where you been at? Okay. Lastly, Search Console is letting you download more data. Now you can download up to 1,000 rows of data. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And 
the the various um, metrics that, that come along with any let's say performance report, right? So you have all sorts of metrics that come along with it. So if you download it into an Excel file, each metric is shown in an individual tab. So that's pretty cool, also. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. I can't even talk yeah. to you. Why? Th I'm just gonna I'm, I'm not gonna look at you. I'm just gonna talk. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for the news up here. That was really wonderful. Oh, Thanks again. You welcome birthday boy this is this, this is like bordering <laughs> on like weirdness please don't start singing happy birthday like Marilyn Monroe to me because that's just awkward I'll do it later no 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 later. no I'm a married person and this is just like oddly I'm weird I'm kidding come on you're creeping me out uh, here okay no seriously you're really creeping me out <laughs> oh boy okay we have to move on because I, I, I have to end this podcast Let's now quickly move over to the fun in search SEO send off question. This SEO send off question, fun SEO send off question, is brought to you by Sapir. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. So mm -hmm. this week we're asking if Google had a pet, what kind of an animal would it be and how would Google name it? Oh, wow. Yeah. I totally forgot we asked this question. I don't have an answer. Okay. <laughs> what do you got? Okay. Um, so Google would raise uh, a spider because it crawls. Oh, that's good. Way not only that's that. Good. I mean, <laughs> Google that's good. would name it Bing. So, Ooh. yeah. So when, Ooh. you know, it gets pissed off, it can just step on it. Wow. Yeah. I think already. I think Google has already stepped on Bing <laughs> and squashed it. <laughs> well, it can do it again. Okay. Up, that, was good, that was a yeah. good answer. That's good because I totally forgot we had, th this was the question. I didn't oh. prepare. Um, <laughs> Google would have yeah. a ferret. A ferret? Yeah. So cute. Right. Uh, why would it have a ferret? Yeah. Um, because it would because, because it would no give me more I have no on. idea I just like the kind of I just like I think it's a funny image of Google walking a ferret I find it funny people walk ferrets because basically it's an oversized like rat basically right it's cuter than a rat and you walk around Come like on. on the leash it's just kind of weird no, it's cute I don't understand that what's the deal with that it's quote cute Seinfeld. it's cute yeah, I, my baby's cute. I'll put that on a leash. <laughs> Good how to would, know. <laughs> how yeah, how yeah. would Google name it? Um, Google would jack the name of another Sesame Street character and just name it that. Oh, okay. So, like, I don't know, um, Telly. It would be name it Telly. Like, Telly Monster. Monster, not Monster. Monster. Because, you know, like, you Google jacked Bert from uh, Sesame I, Street. I, 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 and there's an Elmo, okay. NLP. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And that'll do it for us today. Thank you so much for joining us. We're glad we're back. Tune in again next Tuesday for an all-new episode. We're here to stay. We're not going on break for a little while. And it's been in search because we're all in search of, of something. something. I swear to God, you've ruined my day today. <laughs> See ya. Toodles. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>